podcast. This is episode 17, and today is October 10th, 2014, and today's episode is called Pull Yourself Together. It's a note to myself. (laughs) I say this not to you, but perhaps it is something you need to hear. But it is more uh, me talking to myself, which is sort of what podcasting feels like sometimes. (laughs) Until you all chime in, and then I feel like... Oh, this is lovely. Oh, this is one of those times where I feel like maybe I should just start over, but I'm going to plow ahead (laughs) because I'm already babbling. So I I have a lot to talk with you about this week. I mean, it's, I I know I keep saying that maybe I should just resign myself to the fact that there's always going to be a lot to talk to you about. But the theme today, as I say, is pull yourself together. And it's because I'm in the fiber industry. It's October. It's crazy town time. This happens every fall. I don't know why. Well, it doesn't surprise me, but every year the intensity of it surprises me. Just how busy October especially is. September and October, well, really September through December, honestly. uh, The whole fall and early winter just is super busy. So I'll kind of be talking about some of that and, um, you know, what kinds of things I'm, I'm preparing for this week and um, a few other things as well. And I have a technique segment for you as always at the end where I'm going to show you how to make a center pull ball when you don't have a ball winder, which, you know, as with all of these things, maybe something that you already know how to do. But I thought I'd show you, I've actually had a number of people as I was winding yarn ask me how I do it. So I thought it might be worth showing you. It kind of seemed to fit the theme of pulling yourself together. And, uh, and also show you how to do a bobbin, something that's a little more that you could use for intarsia or when you're trying to get yarn out of the way, like a long tail that you're going to use later to seam something up. Um, so I'll show you how to do both. Okay, so a little bit of uh, brief business before we get started. I got a haircut. <laughs> I got a haircut partly because of something I'm going to talk about later. I needed to look a little more pulled together for uh, something that I'm going to later this week. So I got cut about, it's probably about four inches. Well, I didn't. Somebody who is much more skilled than I am cut this hair off. And uh, if if you remember, it used to be down to about here. So yeah, it's about four inches. And um, of course my son didn't notice until he had been home for about four hours. (laughs) So now he officially has the longest hair in the house. So I got my hair cut. And other business, I uh, wanted to thank some people who have left new iTunes reviews for me. Thank you so much. Uh, Particularly, I may have missed a few a little ways back. I hope not. But there have been two recent ones. Um, Sken Steward, I think would be how you pronounce that, and Nana Pumpkin. Thank you very much. And thanks to all of you who are introducing yourself and chatting in the Ravelry group as well. It's It's been really nice for me to see how what a lively group that's becoming and, and how you all are getting to know each other and, you know, praise each other for each other's work. And I want to remind you that there's a, a thread there where if you are somebody who makes anything crafty, you can promote it there. Um, I'm borrowing this shamelessly from the Knit Girls. So feel free to go there and, you know, if you've got a new pattern out or, uh, if you're a dyer or a project bag maker or stitch markers, you know, anything that's related to, I would say to, to fiber crafts, but if you can make a case for it, I mean, there's one of our group members, for example, makes pottery with knitting, uh, like knitted fabric imprinted into it. So totally fair game. Um, I also want to mention a few knitting, a few new knitting podcasts that I've been watching that I've really been enjoying. Uh, I I enjoy a lot of knitting podcasts, but there were just a few new ones that I found this week that I was especially happy about. Two of them, because they are people that I know and that I've always thought, well, no, one of them I know, and the other one I have seen on others' podcasts. And, um, And I just thought, you know, these people should have podcasts, and now they do. So one of them is Tish McAllister, who is a friend of mine through the Arkansas Fiber Arts Extravaganza. And uh, she is 
just a very magnetic personality. She's one of those people that is a natural host. You know, she does a great job with the extravaganza and uh, it's just kind of always the center of the conversation, not in a selfish way, but just in a she is the positive, ener positive energy of the room kind of way. And she has a new podcast, a video one called Southern Girl Knits. And I believe that it's up on iTunes right now. I haven't double checked that, but it is at least available through her blog. And I will link that in the show notes um, and on YouTube too, I believe. And the other one is uh, Minerva Turkey. Who, uh, whose real name is Shannon. And uh, I just, I find her also very charming. Um, she has great taste in color. She is just, I don't know, just always really excited about what she's working on and what she's about to be working on. I find her enthusiasm very infectious. And, uh, and finally, uh, the Dancing Geek podcast with James. James, I hope that's right. I believe that's right. Um, he is a you know one of the few male knitting podcasters out there, and uh, he he does go on for a while. <laughs> you have to um, his podcasts are sometimes as much as two hours long. But uh, as he mentioned on a, in a previous episode, a lot of people watch it in in small pieces. You know they'll kind of watch a half hour at a time. And, uh, and I just, I find him very interesting to listen to and to watch all these are video podcasts. And, um, and again, I think I, I'm a sucker for, um, infectious enthusiasm really is what it boils down to. I love the yarn raising podcast. Um, you know, I just, I love people who just ooze positive energy for the craft. I, I find it very energizing. Because I can get a little low sometimes. And it just, it picks me up, especially since I work at home alone. It picks me up to, you know, to kind of watch other people who kind of get me excited about the craft all over again. So go check those out. And like I say, I'll link all of those in the show notes for you. Um, one other, oh, and so I guess the other thing I want to talk about before I get into the, the meat of the matter is to show you what I've been working on. Oh, I suppose I should mention what I'm wearing too. Um, this is one of my patterns, the San Juan Batista shawl, uh, which is originally in the book Hitch, by uh, edited by Stephanie Talent. It was a, a book of, it is a book, of really gorgeous uh, Hitchcock-inspired patterns. And uh, and recently the patterns became in, available as individual PDFs. So this one I did based on Vertigo, where if, you, if you've seen Vertigo, there's a tower that, uh, like a monastery tower, that the main characters, you know, kind of chase each other up into. And there's a very dramatic, climactic scene that happens at the top of the tower. And uh, it, it's filmed at the San Juan Batista Monastery. And as it turns out, there was no such tower. They, Hitchcock actually had it fabricated to the monastery itself does not have a tower. Hitchcock had it sort of made it look like there was one. And um, so I just thought it was a great uh, just kind of reflection of the deception that goes on in the film. So if you've ever seen the Vertigo uh, movie poster, this shawl is meant to look like that. It has that same Oops, wrong side. It has that same vertiginous, whoa, kind of quality to it. So the orange and, and light gray stripes go in one direction, and then these yarn overs cut across it to make a kind of spiral effect. And the shape of the shawl is, is a kind of uh, crescent spiral as well. So it's actually wider at one end than it is at the other. And you actually start here on this tip and you just keep adding stitches so that it becomes larger and larger as you go. It's actually an incredibly simple knit. Um, and you can, it's one of those ones where you can just make it as long or as short as you want. You can just go until you, <laughs> apparently I could not talk and put on a shawl at the same time. Uh, so I will stop trying. 
you keep knitting and you can keep knitting until you run out of yarn. And it's originally knit in Shibui sock, but you could work it in really any any sock weight yarn. I'm trying to do it again and I am failing miserably. Stop. There, now I'll wear it like a cravat. <laughs> Oi. All right, so that's what I'm wearing. What am I knitting? Uh, what I am knitting is not particularly, it's work knitting at the moment. I can show you, but uh, I will, one of them I will talk more about in a moment and one of them I will talk more about in another episode. But in some ways I felt like I needed to prove to you that I actually do still knit. <laughs> so here's the thing that I'm going to talk to you more on, on another, talk to you more about on another episode. And that is, and of course I'm in the middle of a row, it is not nearly this bright or saturated, but almost. Uh, this is a kit that I have been sent to review by a little skin in the big wool. And I was the tech editor on this project. Um, it's a lovely classic triangular shaped shawl by Paula Emmons Feasley, who is the host of the Knitting Pipeline podcast, another one that I greatly enjoy. And it's called Balsam Hollow. And like all of the Little Skein in the Big Wool kits, it is uh, based on, or it is attached to a piece of classic literature, in this case, Anne of Green Gables. So the kit comes with, I'll talk in more detail about this another time, but it comes with yarn and stitch markers and a cute bag. And I am, I was sent a, I sent a review copy of the kit and I am working on the, you know, the simple TV knitting garter stitch portion of the shawl now, and I will get to the um, the cute little lace border at another time. I am making the large size, and in fact, I'm going to make it even larger than the large size, just because there's quite a bit of yarn in the kit, and I'd like to use as much of it as possible. Um, yeah, but I've been, I mean, I love knitting these kind of, I love knitting this kind of simple stuff where it's just garter stitch with a few yarn overs back and forth. It's uh, most of the time, this is my kind of knitting, but I'll have more to say about the fun part when I get to it later. And I'm going to review it uh, in a couple of weeks. So more on that to come, including a look at all the sweet stuff that comes with the kit. Uh, the other thing I have been doing, and this will segue into into the, the sort of main topic for the podcast is that I have been knitting what are called step outs. Now, if you have ever watched a, uh, a, a cooking show, a cooking show, a cooking show, you know that they, they do this funny thing where they, you know, have everything all cut up a lot of the time and then they have the casserole ready to put in the oven and it's not cooked yet. And then suddenly magically after the commercial break, the cooked casserole comes out. So each one of those steps where the thing needs to be ready to be filmed at that moment, those are called step outs. And so this is all leading into, I got invited to come film the segment for Knitting Daily TV. So excited. And, uh, and I'm going to be demonstrating how to knit one of the projects from, uh, from Kung Fu Knits, one of the backpack. It's called bag for things. <laughs> it's got exclamation points after it. So um, I needed to think about, so they told me in the handouts that they sent that what I needed to do was to plan, you know, which aspects of the bag I, I wanted to demonstrate and then knit the project several times up to the point you know, up to that point so that I would have something to demonstrate on because they don't obviously don't have enough time for you to sit there and like knit more of the project until you get to the next stage. So I decided to, the, the backpack, here I'll show you in the, in the book. The backpack is not a, a super complicated piece. It's a, it fits over, over your back like this with one strap. And then there's a zipper hidden inside here so that you can put all your stuff in there. 
So it's not it's not a lot of complicated knitting, but there is um, there are a couple of kind of unusual bits of construction in there that I thought were worth demonstrating. So one of them is uh, that the strap is actually cast on. What well, you can see it in this picture. You cast on in this case with the white, just with a regular long tail cast on. Knit this strap in the round all the way around. And then you change to the gray and uh, with a little pearl ridge, pearl turning ridge here, and knit that the same length as the white. And then you just join the two together so it's a double thickness strap. And so one of the things I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, one of the things I'm going to demonstrate is how to do that. I mean, normally you would do a provisional cast on and then just knit the the top set of gray stitches with the cast, the provisional cast on stitches in white. But I don't know about you, provisionally casting on 200 stitches is really just not something I relish. So I thought I would show, you know, if you've got to attach a pretty big hem, like on a sweater, this is another way you can do it. So that's one thing I'm going to demonstrate. So for that, I made or is it this guy? And I, you know, I'm leaving it on the needles so that it'll be ready to, to demo. Apparently I'm going to need to pick some of my hair out too before I go on camera. But I've got it all ready to, you know, fold up and demonstrate how to join those two layers together. So I did that one. And thankfully, my friend Andy Smith, who is also a designer and who's been on uh, Knitting Daily before, told me that I don't need to make full-sized samples for this, which, man, that was a huge relief because I thought I would had to make like an actual 200, which is like, no. <laughs> but she spared me that. So then the next thing I wanted to show was once you've got all of that done, more hair, once you've got all of that done, joining up those, how do you then cast on the extra stitches that you need in order to start the bag? And so I'm going to show how to do a knitted cast on when you're in the middle of a row. So that's what this is for. And then I have a third piece that is now wet and blocking in the other room that is the complete backpack ready for the zipper to be sewn in. So uh, I'll be showing how to how to sew, an easy way to sew in a zipper. And the whole kind of theme of this is, this is knitting for kids, so let's keep it as simple as possible while still making it look good. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. And it's just, it's really, really interesting, all the different stuff that goes into this. Like I got all these handouts where they describe to me, you know, what I could wear, number one. So no wearing black, no wearing red, absolutely no wearing white, because I guess Red doesn't film well, black just makes you recede into the background, and white is just like, wah. So, um, so I actually need to go shopping for clothes later today because I realized I don't really have that many dressy clothes anymore because, you know, for almost three years now, I've been working out of my house, so I don't really have dress-up clothes anymore. And the stuff that I do have is pretty much all black or red or white. So I need to go get something else. On Monday, I need to go take care of these, which don't look too bad, honestly. I mean, if you could have seen my nails about 10 years ago, this is looking pretty good. But you know, I need a manicure. I need to get, and they said clear nail polish or something flesh colored, nothing that will stand out because you know I'm gonna be demonstrating stuff with the camera like right there. So uh, your hands have to look good. I mean, I've got like, I've got a scar on, I guess you can't see it. That's good. <laughs> I've got a scar on my finger from where I cheese grated it a couple of weeks ago. You know, it's just, you cannot force me to be girly. You just can't. So yeah. And what else was I told? I, I have to practice. That's another, my other task for Monday is to practice multiple times running through, rehearsing my different technique demonstrations so that it will take as little time as possible while still sounding chatty and but you know kind of getting through it efficiently and not messing up 
so I'll be doing that. And I, so that that taping is actually on Wednesday. I'm leaving here on Tuesday morning and getting into Cleveland, which is both on, on that afternoon. So and Cleveland is both where Knitting Daily is filmed and also where Shannon Oki lives. So I'm going to be traveling with her on Thursday at her and Andy previously mentioned out to Rhinebeck where we're going to uh, go to the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. And, uh, and I'm going to be working at the Cooperative Press booth on Saturday, signing copies of my book. And on Sunday, I'll just be walking around like a regular woman on wa on, on wool fumes. <laughs> oh, Ryan Pack. So there's actually, if you are going, by the way, there is a podcaster meetup at 1 p.m. on the hill near the main entrance on Saturday. So do, and there's, uh, there's a uh, Ravelry meetup the hour before that in the same location. So do come by because it's a, a great place to meet people and, uh, you know, podcasters tend to be pretty friendly people, like most knitters, right? So, yeah, come say hello. I'll have buttons, you know, as you do. So, uh, yeah, going to Rhinebeck. So for Rhinebeck and for another thing that I'm doing this Saturday, I needed to make kits because, so look back here. You can see all the stuff that I've been preparing. There, there is the Kung Fu Knits outfit and backpack um, that I've got all assembled on my, my dress form. And in the green bags, green bags, are all of the kits that I'm putting together because this weekend, this Saturday, I'm going to be doing a book signing at the Knitting Nest, which is one of our lovely local yarn stores here in Austin. And luckily it's happening during the Hill Country Yarn Crawl, which is a 13 store extravaganza of yarny goodness. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we're gonna do, I'm really excited about this. We're going to do a, two of the women from my son's Kung Fu studio. They're both students, one's a black belt, one's a blue belt. They're going to come do a Kung Fu demonstration, how to do some katas and self-defense techniques, and then I'm going to sign books and be selling kits. So I'm very excited about that. That's two to four on Saturday at the Knitting Nest, if you happen to live near Austin. Uh, and the whole Hill Country Yarn Crawl is just full of events and patterns and yarn sales and all kinds of great stuff. Uh, and Stacy, who owns the Knitting Nest very nicely, let me put together some kits where basically I'm putting, I've put everything but the yarn and the needles in because in her case, since she's at a yarn shop, you, know, you can take any, any skein or skeins of Cascade 220 and put it in there. So I thought, you know, people would just pick their colors. So the kit has everything other than that, other than the yarn and needles that you would need to make the nunchucks and the throwing stars from the book. So it'll have the book, It'll have uh, the poly, polyfill stuffing, which, God, that was funny, trying to cram all that into Ziploc bags. <laughs> Looks like I'm a drug dealer. I've got all these like little dime bags of, of uh, fluff sitting around. So it has a polyfill stuffing. It's got some either hemp or leather cord to you know string the nunchucks together. It's got a crochet hook in case you don't have one of the right size to chain the hemp cord with. And, uh, oh, and it has a yarn needle in it to sew things up. So, yeah, I'm going to be doing that on Saturday. And then I'm going to bring similar kits, but with yarn in them to Rhinebeck with me. And, um, and I'd love your feedback on this. If you, if you think, if you would like to have kits available in, say, an Etsy shop or somewhere on my website, just let me know because I'm thinking about, about doing this on a broader scale if the if the kits do well at the book signing and at, and at Rhinebeck. Um, yeah, so there's just, there's a lot coming up. And I guess the reason I called this Pull Yourself Together is not just because, you know, I needed to get my hair cut and 
get my nails did as they as they say here in the south but uh, I just I have to like gear myself up for this kind of stuff you know back to the episode on quiet introvert <laughs> it's a lot of social time for me in the next week I've got the book signing I've got the taping at Knitting Daily and Rhinebeck, which is two full days, and staying in a house with five other people. Um, so it's just, it's a little overwhelming. I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, but I just, I find that the anticipation of these kinds of things, like, I've actually almost just been paralyzed with overwhelm, you know? Like it takes me until about 9.30 really to kind of get going because I'm just kind of sitting there in the chair going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I've got so much to do and I've, it's so, ah, just be, it sounds so silly when I say it out loud, but it just, it feels like a lot to gear up for. So I will stop babbling about this now, but that's what's on the horizon. I think this is going to be a nicer, shorter episode today because that's what I've got to say about that. Let me pause this for a second and um, I'm going to actually, no, hang on, I'm just going to grab some yarn from back here. Here we go. Last bit, technique segment. How to roll a ball when you don't have a ball winder. So there are lots of ways you can do this. And uh, if you're starting with an actual skein, you know, one of those things that you have to unroll and it's in a, a large loop, one of the things that you will want to do is get that skein under control before you start winding. So typically what I do is I actually put the skein around both of my knees and just keep it from popping off. Make sure that it doesn't pop off my knees while I'm rolling and stuff. Um, you can put it on the backs of a chair. You can have somebody hold their hands out like this. It's, you know, really up to you how you want to do that. But I wanted to show you with my hands what I'm actually doing with the yarn when I'm rolling it up into a center pole ball. So first you need to leave a little bit of a tail, like just an inch or so, sticking out. And I just kind of make sure with my thumb that I keep it separate. Here, let me turn this way. It'll be better that I kind of keep it separate from the yarn as I start to wind so that it doesn't get too caught up in it. And I wind around two fingers and keep them kind of spread out so that it'll be easy to get the yarn off my fingers. And when I've got, you know, a, a couple of layers of yarn going here, then I just pull it off my fingers and keep it, you know, all kind of parallel to each other. And then I just start winding in a perpendicular direction around that. Still kind of keeping the tail from getting consumed inside the ball. And then I just keep, keep going, kind of turning it diagonally a little bit. And notice that I'm keeping at least one finger, usually I do two, to keep the yarn from getting wound too tightly. You remember in a previous episode we talked about winding yarn and how you don't want to stretch it out too much when you're winding it. So I just turn it again and keep my two fingers in there. And you just kind of keep going along like this until all of your yarn is wound up. And I actually want to go ahead and wind all of this up here quickly because I want to show you what I do at the end as well. I probably do about 10 wraps when it's yarn that's this thick. If it's yarn that's a little thinner, I'll wind a few more wraps. I don't count or anything, but I just kind of wind about the same amount of time and then move on. So here I've got the end and I just take it and I tuck it under that outermost layer just so it doesn't come out. And there's my little end, and I can pull it out, just like that. 
So that's one way to do it. And then what if you, so the other, the other thing I wanted to show you is if you've got, uh, let's say you are knitting a sweater and you've left a nice long tail at the cast on because you want to use it to, to seam up the sweater later. Or if you're working an intarsia pattern and you need to make bobbins of yarn to, um, you know, to kind of keep the colors separate, how do you do that? So let me show you how I do bobbins. In this case, I use all four fingers and I have, I basically wind it around like this. So I'll start with, in this case, I don't really worry too much about the tail, but I just kind of figure eight the yarn in and out of my fingers. So see how it's crossing in the middle here? That's the tail. That's why that's not crossing, but otherwise, I am crisscrossing the whole thing. And again, I want to actually finish so I can show you what you do at the end. So this is a bigger bobbin than you would normally wind up. And in fact, it's going to get too big for me to even manage. But what I would then do, like once it gets to the point where, you know, I want to, I have like about a foot of yarn left, I take it and I wind it, like wind the whole thing around and around and around like this to kind of hold it all together in a butterfly. And then if this were the end, like I didn't get to the end, but if this were the end, I would just tuck it through one of these holes, kind of pull my fingers out and pull the end up through the hole just to kind of lock it in place ignore this, that wouldn't be there. <laughs> but yeah, so then you would have one end coming out of here and the other end be somewhere in here. Okay, I did lose track of it, but you get the basic idea. And then you can just kind of pull the, pull one end off the outside or off the inside. So that's how you make a little bobbin. All right, short one this week, but I got a lot to do. <laughs> it's great to talk to you all, and I will see you in a couple of weeks after I get back from all of these shenanigans. Shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, I watch too many podcasts. <laughs> and you can find me online in the meantime at darkmatternits.com, and I'm Dark Matter Knits on Ravelry, all the social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter. And I will uh, see you soon. Hope you have a great week. Bye.